going to be diving into the mysteries of the pentagram. Allow me to share my screen. So essentially, we're going to be talking about the pentagram and the symbolicness of what it represents in the Western tradition, as well as any tradition, um, because truth is related to us in symbols. Um, I'm going to be reading from Eliphas Levi, High Magic, Doctrine and Ritual of High Magic by Eliphas Levi. We're going to be talking about the chapter called the Pentagram. Up until now, we have expanded upon the most arid and abstract aspects of magical doctrine. Here begin the enchantments. Here we can announce wonders and reveal the most hidden of themes. The pentagram expresses the do domination of the mind over the elements, and it is by this symbol that we can enchain the demons of air, the spirits of fire, the specters of water, and the ghosts of the earth. What is Elephas Levi talking about when he's talking about how the pentagram is what we use to dominate? It's the domination of the mind over the elements. So if we take it to the top part. The top part of the pentagram is the symbolic nature of man's higher nature, the spirit, the mind of man. He said that man is the accumulation or the highest point of material evolution. Uh, when the soul descends into matter, it ascend, it incarnates into a physical body. It goes through the different kingdoms, mineral, plant, vegetable, animal, and finally finds its abode in the temple or the human body in which it takes its, its chance to ascend to the higher spheres. Um, but in order to do this, you must dominate the lower elements of the animal nature. So the pentagram represents the ability uh, for us to have the consciousness or the higher mind to dominate the spirits of earth. And this would be, earth would be represented of like lethargy, to be lethargic or to be lazy or to be um, not in control over the body impulses. To dominate over the water element would be to dominate your emotional nature. Are you always in melancholy? Are you always depressed and saturated with emotional feelings? Um, can we, you can use the symbol of the pentagram to make sure that the mind is being, is what is dominating the four elements because the mind is sky or ether and the top of the pentagram is represented of ether or spirit. Now, the, uh, the four ones on the bottom are um, earth, fire, water, and air, the four elements dominated by ether, spirit, or intelligence. That's why Levis Levi says up the pentagram expresses the domination of the mind over the elements, and it is by the symbol that we can enchain the demons of air, the spirits of fire, the specters of water, and the ghost of the earth. When we're in our higher mind, we are no longer being, you know, we don't have fears of ghosts or scary things popping up in our room or bad dreams. We are in our full intelligence. We master over the ghosts of the earth, the temptresses of the water, you know. Many times we are tempted to spill our, our secretion through lust. And this doesn't only happen in the physical realm, but also in the astral plane. When the spirit, the water mermaids or the spirit water, um, you know, the spirits of water try to tempt us to um, have nocturnal emissions. But when we are standing upright in our higher mind and working from our cerebrum, we are dominating that lower aspect of our and we can overcome it. So the pentagram is a symbol of the upright man who's going against his animal impulses. And um, opposite of that, the upside down pentagram would mean the opposite. He goes on to say, armed with this symbol and properly prepared, you can see the infinite by using that faculty, which is like the eye of your soul. And you have the legions of angels and columns of demons serve you. What does it mean by columns of demons serve you? Well, of course, your lower animal impulses, once we take control and activate our higher minds through practicing alchemy, our lower in instincts work for us, not against us. We turn our body into a battery powerhouse where the, where the energy at the bottom of the spine is secreting upward and nourishing the tree of life, which is the upper part of the nervous system. We're able to control and dominate the demons and have the demon of lust serve us for chastity. 
to have the demon of greed, to be greedy for knowledge of God, to be um, to transmute and deify our desires into higher forms, more subtle forms. And let us first state the principles. There is no invisible world. There are only degrees of perfection in the different systems. Objects and crude representations are like the temporary crust of the soul. The soul can perceive objects on its own without the intercession of the corporeal organs. Through its own sensibility and its diaphane, it can see either spiritual or corporeal objects that exist in the universe. Spiritual and corporeal are words which only express the degrees of subtlety or density of the substance. Now, just as Ken Willer was saying that everything is the field and this realm and all the different realms that we can abide in are just condensations or condensed ether. The ether in this realm that we're in, Malkuth, or the physical realm, is super dense, super condensed. And then we go to the more subtle realm where we upgrade. When we finally pass this realm, we go to the realm that's less dense. Now, of course, it's another physical realm, but it's not physical like this realm. This is earth, water, air, and fire, in which another physical realm might just be air and fire and ether, right? You don't have the drag down density of the earth element. You can overcome the tomb and go to more subtle realities, but that doesn't mean that they're not physical. When you go to sleep and go to a dream, huh, obviously you're in an astral plane. It's a physical reality. There's cars, there's a sky, you have physical sensations, you could eat food there essentially, but it's definitely not as dense as this realm. What we call our imagination is simply the inherent property of our soul to assimilate images and the reflections contained in the living light, which is the great magnetic agent. Aliphas Levi shows us that imagination is the most powerful tool of the magician, because when we imagine something, we are not just creating it. We are able to pick up on the reflections that are already crystallized in the ether. What we call imagination is simply the inherent property of our soul to assimilate images and the reflections contained in the living light, which is the great magnetic agent. These images and reflections are re revelations when science intervenes to reveal the object or the light to us. The man of genius differs from the, dream, the dreamer and the madman only in that his creations are analogous to the truth, whereas those of dreamers and madmen are lost reflections and misplaced images. Thus, for the sage, to imagine is to see just as for the magician to speak is to create. I love Alephus Levi. He really goes deep into things. Here he's basically saying that, that for the sage to imagine, our imagination is our true eye. Our third eye is actually our first eye. And that inner eye that we used to see is how you're supposed to see. These physical eyes are Lucifer. They're the two thieves that Jesus was crucified in between. They lie and blind us. They are only seeing the red shift, blue shift of the material realm. Our internal eyes are the ones that are the invisible eyes that can see and imagine is our true eyes that we had before we were physically entombed in matter. We can thus really and truly see demons, souls, etc. by means of the imagination. But the imagination of the adept is diaphanous, while the imagination of the vulgar is opaque. The light of truth crosses one as through a splendid window and refracts in the other as through a glazed mass full of dross and foreign objects. That which contributes the most to the errors of the vulgar and to the extravagances of folly are people depraved with our people's depraved reflections of the imagination. However, but the seer knows with the certainty of science that the things he imagines are true and experiences always confirm his visions. We will explain in the ritual by what we will explain in the ritual by what means we can acquire this lucidity. It is by the means of this light that static visionaries are able to communicate with all the worlds, as happens so often. We say dreams because the dream is the result of natural and periodic ecstasy called sleep. To be in ecstasy is to dream. Magnetic sonobolism is a reproduction and a way of ecstasy. Dreams are visions produced by the refracted rays of truth. So when we're dreaming, we're seeing into another realm, another realm that is actually very real and more real than this world that we call what we wake up in. 
The waking state here in the physical realm is a state of death, a numbness, or in a tomb until we bring the illumination of the pentagram by living an upright, righteous life and activating our consciousness, which takes us out of the animal kingdom, which allows us to tr become a human being. And then our imagination is how we see our thoughts are how we create. We become magicians through the word. We learn to utilize our words and use our imagination. Imagination plus will equals conscious astral projection by going to sleep and putting the body into a state of deep relaxation and activating the imagination. We can imagine being on a street we were in at seven years old or a street in our neighborhood or a, or a, or a grove or a meadow. And we can imagine ourselves there and using our will, we can consciously activate our experience and project into it. But we have to have enough sexual energy in our body to have this experience because we need to charge our upper faculties. We've drained our systems and the system has taught us to drain our systems. And until we recuperate what we've lost, we can't regain these talents. This is why in the pentagram, you see the Kundalini at the bottom rising, the two eyes. These are the spiritual eyes of man, the tetragrammaton, which is the, all four elements combined with ether making the pentagram. We have the sun and the moon balancing the left and right hemispheres of the brain and awakening. We have the sword of willpower because with the sword of willpower, we need to direct our conscious efforts to overcome our mistakes. And we can do that simply by replacing bad habits with good habits. Let us all replace bad habits with some type of good habit, whether it's quitting smoking, quitting judging, quitting gossiping. We can renew ourselves daily in the light of truth, and we can actually visualize this pentagram or make the pentagram shape with our body. Let's start here. Put your arms downward and then up and touch the shoulders forming the pentagram where you can simply visualize it in your head in your imagination like we just said how imagination is the true sight and a bridge to the spiritual realm there is no vacuum in nature all is filled there is no real death in nature all is alive do you see that star said napoleon to cardinal fetch no, sire, really. Well, I see it. And he certainly did see it. It is for this reason that we accuse great men of having been superstitious. It is that they saw what the vulgar did not see. Men of genius differ from ordinary seers by the faculty they have for making other men sense what they see themselves and to be believed out of the enthusiasm and sympathy. There are mediums of the divine verb, he goes on to say. All the forms correspond to ideas, and there's no idea which does not have its own particular form. The primordial light, the vehicle for all ideas, is the mother of all forms and transmits them from emanation to emanation. They are only weakened or altered because of the density of the environment. The secondary forms are reflections which return back to the home of the emanated light. The forms of objects being a modification of light stay in the light where reflections refer to them. Also, the astrolite or terrestrial fluid, which we call the great magical agent, is saturated with images or reflections of all kinds, which souls can evoke and submit to its diaphane, as the Kabbalists say. These images are always present in us and are only erased by stronger imprints of the reality of the waking world or by preoccupation with our thoughts, which render our imagination inattentive to the mobile panorama of the astral light. When we sleep, this spectacle presents itself to us and is thus that we produce reveries and reveries which are incoherent and vague unless some dominant will remains active during sleep and gives unbeknownst to our intellect, a direction to the reverie, which then transforms it into a dream. So essentially what we have to do is go to sleep with this higher will intact. We have to turn our pentagrams upright because right now they're upside down and the upside down pen pentagram represents the, the energies of the Kundalini going downward and outward. We need to transmute and change our behavior so that our pentagrams are upright so that when we go to sleep, we have the predominant will intact. 
our consciousness will be awake and we can make sense of the astral light images that we see. We can project into different realities. We can control the four elementals. Once we raise our pentagram upright, the gnomes or the earth creatures will work in our favor and help us accomplish our mundane task. The mermaids will help us understand our emotional relationships and better conquer them. We can have our ability to think wisely, to um, master the, the power over the sprites, which are the little creatures of the air, and allow them to help us understand and think clearly rather than being stuck in melancholy or depression or anxiety. These are all abnormal forms showing that our configure our astral elemental configuration needs work and that's why in hermeticism and ceremonial magic we will be going into ways how to purify each of the elements and understand how to become a magician to use our imagination to consciously pierce through the veil and and in be able to invoke the seven powers of the seven planets to be able to be in charge of our lower nature and dominate our impulses so that we can rise the kundalini or the mercury up the thermometer because we all are bestowed with the spiritual thermometer that either rises or falls depending on our actions and merits and the lord in the heart the divine mother in our heart is the one that's in charge of the ascent if we're doing righteous acts just because we feel like we're going to get into heaven that is not going to rise the cerebral spinal fluid. We have to be consciously um, doing things for the right reasons. We have to be able to really tear, turn our lust into chastity and love and comprehension um, through sexual alchemy by applying love, turning that lustful instinctual energy into love, which will help rise the fluid. But when we choose to just become rebellious and act upon our animal impulses, the energy spills down and outward and the pentagram turns upside down. Now the temptress will, will completely seduce you. The gnomes will be picking on you, stubbing your toe, making you late for work. The um, spirit of the Udines in the waters will make you emotionally, you know, you'll always be feeling sad. And then the sprites will be in your head and, and the Udines, the, what are they? The Udines, the Sylphs, sorry, not the Sprites, the Sylphs. The Sylphs are the, the air spirits. And the air spirits will be just hitting your mind, making you melancholy, making you think about the past, not the, you know, not in the present moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to activate this inner dominant will. And we do this by 100% merging and observing the being within and identifying with the inner being and staying awake consciously while we're in the physical waking state so that we can carry on this will into our sleep and be able to experience consciously the astral plane. We can also be able to have the energy flowing upward naturally. You don't have to have all of this lust building up in your lower chakras only for it to um, explode downward and out. Instead, you can have it naturally seep up into the brain up into the chalice. The brain is the chalice. And as we can see the chalice on the right, after the one, two, three, the TRA, there's the chalice, which is the cup, which is the brain also as above, so below. It's the female yoni or reproductive system. We need to learn how to keep our chalice full, to transmute the semen up into the spinal column, breathe and become pure and allow the fluids to rise into the brain, which is the upper chalice where you can drink from the waters of life, which will never run dry. This is an introductory lesson to the mysteries of the pentagram. And um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this presentation. I know it was short, but um, I want to make sure that we are doing all we can to, you know, take it bit by bit in a, in a manner that's digestible. So um, thank you for being part of the Syncretism Society Virtual Academy. I hope you guys have a wonderful night.